Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Nish Kumar Singh and we are talking about UFT tutorials. I always wonder if it was easy for anyone to understand automation and that should be something which makes anyone to understand and grasp the skill set of automation and automating a test. And that's where the question comes is, is there a way to write a script without having the knowledge of scripting language? Yes, it is. That's where UFT will be talking about some of these options today and we will be helping you to understand that how you can actually prepare your automation script without even having the knowledge of VB script, which is the language used in UFT for automating your activities. Now today in this tutorial, we'll be talking about the same thing where we'll be exploring the different ways of creating your script without having the knowledge of VB script. So let's have look forward to that and understand in more detail that how we can do that exactly. As a part of this tutorial, we will be understanding how to create scripts in UFT without recording. Using editor view, using keyword view, using step generator and using object repository are different ways by which you can actually populate your script without even having knowledge of VB script. Now let's understand how that could be really helpful for someone getting started with understanding on the automation and being an automation tester. To get started, the very first thing is of course to have the objects in the repository without which your UFT will not understand that what are you trying to tell him in form of the script instructions. Now generally UFT take instructions in VB script, but the VB script is understood by the UFT in terms of executing that on application by having desired properties or the desired properties which will help that script uniquely identify the objects on the application. And that's pretty much more important. Now without the script, you won't find anything feasible enough to write it. In fact, you won't know what objects to refer as we saw them during the recording of our previous sessions. In recording, it did say that the object name is this, the class is that, and this is what the name of the object is and what kind of methods you can perform. Now, of course, that will come with help of object spy and doing this manually by clicking on each and every object and trying to identify the name and properties of it would be very tedious task. Now, what you do in minimizing your effort on that, you just go to repository, go to object repository, and then just include that shared repository which you created in our previous tutorials and just make use of it. So click on tools, click on associate repository, click on the add button again here and pick up the repository which you saved. And just click on this particular button to open it and say your action want to make use of this repository instead of the local object repository. Press OK. Now you would see that all your objects are now here with their desired properties as well. Now it will become our job like it will make our job more easier and simpler to start writing our script. Let's get started with the first option that is how do you write your script quite simply as a part of the editor view. So in editor view is just a canvas you start writing by having the protocol of the VB script. The protocol of VB script says that you start with the class name followed by the object name. So if you see I have got uh, the class name as WF window, WPF window and you just open that and you get the name of the object automatically written here. Similarly, the next one is WPF edit. The only reason we are getting all these suggestions because they exist in our object repository. And from there it's coming with a suggestion stating that would you like to go ahead with these objects or you want to have something different. Now that's where my next object is WPF edit. And again, we have different suggestions coming in from different objects which we have in the repository. So right now my object is agent name, which is the username, and there we just go with set. The only thing what you may have to remember in order to write your scripts directly in editor view is the class name followed by the object name and then the method. Of course, the object names will be given in a autocomplete suggestions. You can pick it up from there. So not exactly you have to remember them, but the method which applies to those type of objects would be something really important for you to understand. And then you just insert the value which you want to pass. Let's continue doing the same job for the rest of the uh, steps. And let's complete that. WPF edit. And here we want to go with password. And this is again set. When you are entering your password yourself, you just have to 
write the password and use the method as dot set. But when you're recording, it generally captures the secured password as encrypted value. So it says dot set secure. The last step to basically uh, run this is to click on OK button. So this time it is WPF button and the button name is again OK. As you start working on different objects, you'll get familiar with the name of the application object. So it will become easy for you to remember. It's just that I have worked several times on this application, so I do remember everything about it. So the operation or the method used for these type of objects will be different. As it is a button, it will be click. And you will also get suggestions on what else you can do with that. For example, here we got a suggestion that it could be double click as well. Now let's try doing this in the application and run this to check that if it is really working for us or it's just a fake user creation or script creation. So let's click on run button here to just make sure that the script runs. Okay, you see that it's working fine. So now your script execution is complete and it says a success, that is it is passed. So this is what we were trying to understand that it could be sometimes very simple to get started with VB script and start learning that and implementing your own script. You do remember that keyword view is a same thing, but a representation of the script is in a tabular form and sometimes becomes quite simple and easy to follow them. Now, just for your kind information, I'm going to delete this particular script and move to my keyword view and start writing my script. So the keyword view is another way to write your script in a much simpler way without putting a lot of your effort. So click on new step here and drop down the parent object which you want to start with. Now do you see that they don't even ask you the class name because considering that you are so new to UFT that you really don't understand that what are the classes, what's the syntax and you just want to prepare your script. So I say yeah I know the object name, this is my parent object, activate it, that means just bring it on the focus. After this, I want to get into the child object, so automatically the tree will be created. And you just have to scroll down to find out your object which you want to work with. So click on agent name. And do you see that the set method is automatically taken? So keyword view is for someone who really don't understand what the script is all about, what the syntax is all about, but still capable enough to prepare the script. And this is kind of a scriptless approach to write this. Now assume that I just know that there is a test data required for this, but I don't know it should be mentioned in double quotes or not. So I just mention it as John and hit enter. The UFT automatically captures the required double quotes to complete the syntax and completes your statement for the activity as well. Let's quickly complete for the rest of the activities. The next one is, of course, the password. You can make a search by typing partial values and say the password is again HP. Hit enter. And the last step is to click on the OK button. So let's go to OK. And that's it. You're done. It was quick, faster and quicker compared to the editor view, what you had in the previous example. Now, if I go back to the editor view, hooray, we have the scripts. And you can see that, you know, new step has been also added to make the window active on the screen when you are going to execute this. Now, this is something which is going to make a difference when you don't know the script, but you can still work with UFT, calling it as very user-friendly application. Let's launch it again because the script starts from where it was supposed to start. So we have to give the same state to the script to get started. Click on run or I can let's go back to keyword view and then run it. So you can run it from any particular window wherever you are in. So right now your execution will continue with the same things what you've just written. It will start with activating the window, agent name, pressing the OK button and that's it. So your execution is still complete. So that's the second way of writing your script without writing the script. All right, that sounds funny, but yes, it is. That's so true that you really don't have to know VB script to get started writing some simple and easy, simple scripts to start your automation journey. Coming to the next part of it, again, for your kind information, I'm just doing a control A and delete so that you do not wonder that, you know, script was already there and so on. Let's move into the third step. This is called as design, where you have something called as step generator. Now, step generator is the third way of preparing your script using, again, some certain basic steps. For example, if you see right now, we have different categories. We have test objects, we have utility objects, and we have functions. We'll be coming to the utility and function later at different point of time. But right now, we are working on the test objects, which are from the application. And if you see your app, just because your object repository has this, 
it is all shown here. So you just select the parent object. Now what is that you want to do with it? Do you want to perform any set of actions? Yes, that's activate. And if you see a preview will be displayed to you, this is what the script will be generated. And I would say, yes, this is what I want. Click on insert another step to continue on this window. If you uncheck this box here at the bottom, you will press OK, the window will close and you have to reopen it. If you want to write consistently multiple lines, you just select this box and say insert. Now you would see that this step is added. Let's get into the child objects, but we don't see them here. So here is a button which will allow you to change the hierarchy in the tree. So from parent, you are getting into the child and select the agent name, press OK. Now you see that my script is going into the child object saying that WPF edit agent name dot set dot text. Again, this is the most convenient way to write your script without even just mentioning that in the dropout. So here you know that there's a value again and assume that again you don't know that the syntax says you should have the double quotes to be mentioned here. And all you do is just press uh, enter and say here the double quotes are taken in your script. Sorry. I was supposed to click on insert by the new line, but I think that's already inserted by clicking on this. So here I'll just come, uh, let me just close this for the time being and hit enter. So your step is generated. So that's so simple to understand that how you can do it in a very simple and uh, easy way. Let's quickly complete this with the rest of the activities. So you get into the child object uh, once again, but if you continue on the same window, you don't really have to select the child objects every time. I'll show you that. So now it's time for the password. Now the password is HP and hit enter. So step is generated. Check this, click on insert. And next comes is OK button. So now if you see, we are only in the child objects, not in the parent object any longer. So let's come to the buttons, which will be on the top. And uh, here I should look forward to an OK button. That's in alphabetic order. So here is OK. And there's a click operation on this, but we don't have anything else to do. Click on OK. That's it. Your script is now again ready. And the same view will be seen in the keyword view also. So now again, let's run this to confirm that our script is populated correctly. And uh, all we need to have is the application in the initial state and then run it. You might be wondering that every time I'm manually launching the application, is there a way to launch automatically? Yes, of course. But I want to do that separately in a different tutorial to tell you the different ways of launching an application and also covering some of the other settings which may be helpful to launch the application. So, yep, that works fine again. So that's the third way of preparing your script, uh, you know, without having a recording in place. Again, control A, delete. The fourth way and the last way to do the same job is your object repository itself. So you just have to navigate to your object repository and the resources menu. Have that object repository right next to you and find out those objects which you want to interact with and just simply drag and drop. Something like this. All right. So that's so simple. The simplest way to do it is just come to object repository and pick up your objects what you want to deal with and just drag and drop it and that should be done. The next object is agent name. I just drag and drop it here. I've got it. And then I have password. So drag and drop it. Done. And then I have an OK button. Click, drag and drop it. Hardly a few seconds is what I've taken to create this login script. But the only difference is here you didn't mention the values. So that is what you need to come back and do it manually just to include them. Sometimes it can be a parameter. You can be passing it from an external source. So no need to do that as well. Just use the parameter and the parameter will go to the Excel sheet and pick it up, which we will see in the upcoming tutorials. Now again, to confirm this, that the script is absolutely fine, I'm launching the flight application once again and uh, trying to run this. So when I run the script again, oh, so hopefully you know now that the script will pass and it will work and do the desired activity what it is supposed to do. That's it. So now you get to know that how exactly a script can be created in UFT without having a good knowledge of VBS script sometimes. Editor view is only for those people who have a good grip on VBS script and they think that it will be more convenient for them to start writing the script directly in the editor view. But UFT caters people who are new to VBS script as well and there are three different ways to do that without even having the knowledge of script. 
But yeah, put together, there are four different ways by which you can create your script without having the knowledge of VB script or without having the recording in place. So generally, it's a very common thing that the application is still under development and you're trying to create a script. And that's where the object repositories are used to create dummy objects and create your script. The moment the application comes, you map the properties and run the test. Now, of course, that could be another question to talk about that the application is not with us. So we don't have objects in the repository. So how can we write the script, right? Because here the only objective was that if you have the objects in the repository, this becomes simple. But if you don't have the objects in the repository, you cannot do any of these steps. That means neither using editor view, neither using uh, the keyword view, nor the step generator, nor the object repository. So how do we deal with that? That's what we'll be covering in the next tutorial to understand that how to prepare your script without having the objects where the application is still under development. Stay tuned for that. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to answer your queries and address them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.